Got it all the way around. How do I do it? Finish. How do I do it? There we go. There we go. To be or not to be, that is the question. Well, the question, that's not the question. The question is, when do you listen to advice or when do you listen to others around you and negativity and take heed of it? Hello, Lee. Lee Webster and Lee Francis, two good names. And when do you... That's, sorry, that's bollocks to that. I'm not listening to that. That's your... There are times when you really should listen to people. Hey, Ray. What do we know? Aaron Johnson. So, guys, what do you do? I have listened to the wrong people way too many times. And as I'm getting a little bit much more mature... Hello, Aaron Settlefield. How are you doing? Good old set of fields. Lee Francis, hello bro. Now, I'm like, I don't need to listen to those people because they're not helping me. They're really not helping me. Everybody think, everybody's, everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. And I do value other people's opinions. And listen, if I'm about to launch a brand in Mothercare, for instance, or as a, um, hello Robin Deacon, if I'm going to watch a family brand and at the time I've got some bad PR, I'm going to listen to the experts and say, right, it's probably not the best time. You're going to waste your money. But there are times when you, you sometimes just got to say, sod it. It's time to just go and get out there. And David Lapwell, hope you enjoy my boot camp today, mate. Hope you're eating something healthy. Hey, Ray. Have you got the height? What do you mean have I got the height? What do you mean by that, bro? Helen Devent, what do you know? So I'm, I'm asking, when do you listen to other people and when do you say sod it? I've had, obviously being in the media a little bit, I've got a thousand opinions, people saying the most horrific, horrendous things. And I'm like, do I listen to them? I'm going to bring you on camera. Yeah. Hello, Prash. How you doing, mate? Hello. I've just asked the How question. You doing? I just asked the question. We've got quite a few people on it. When do you listen and take advice from other people? And when do you say, nah? I mean, obviously, <laughs> everybody's got an opinion. And some people have very negative opinions. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's fortuitous. To, to take heed of what they're saying. Mate, you don't want to you don't want to go on that cliff. It's a bit dodgy and you're probably gonna fall off and break your neck. Mm, mm. Yeah, okay. Sometimes but if, if you've got a mission and you've got to get over the mountain, you're gonna to have to climb up the cliff. Everyone's yeah, saying don't sure. do it and you're saying you're thinking, I oh, know it, 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 you're right. I shouldn't do it, but if I don't do it, I'm not gonna get my mission. I'm not gonna feed my family over the other side of the mountain. Bit of an analogy yeah i know and there are a lot of people who do good as they want to give good advice and they mean well and then there are others who may not we mean as well and you've got to learn to distinguish when to listen and when not i think that's really what what we really i think wanted to touch on on this live right you know when to give a damn about somebody's opinion and when not to Justin Temple said, don't listen to negative friends with negative people. But the thing is, it, it, the, the people around you, are your, the, your most valued loved ones can be the most negative around you. And that's, it's, the, it's how do you, your, your partner, your, your, your mother, your father, your, your brother, your best mate, and they, they, they mean you the best, but they have such a negative opinion. Right. You're like, hang on, what do you do in that situation? I think you have to use a little bit of discrimination and it goes back to becoming emotionally and intellectually aware of the, in, of the intent behind what they're saying. It a lot weighs on that intent. If the intent is clean, it's noble, it's well meant, you would respond to it one way. You may not like what they're saying, but then that becomes a consideration for your ego. Right, so there are a number of things going on here. There's the, what the other person is saying. There's how you're, how you're interpreting what they're saying, 
right? Which means your ego and your emotion, your ego and your mind interprets what's being said. And then how's there's how you respond to that. So there's a real um, sequence of things that are going on. And the better we understand that sequence of events, the better we are to decide whether to accept that feedback because it's good or to ignore it. Sometimes um, you value the opinion of somebody else, but you, you're, you're so adamant. If you want to be successful, there's going to be a million, there's going to be half the people are going to say, that's not how to do it. That's not how you're going to be successful. And then there's yeah, totally. people say, just throw caution to the wind and say, sod it, I'm going to go and do it. And they prove the world wrong. Yeah. Um, the, the Christopher Columbus is, it's not the, the best example, but it is an no, example. But, um... It's an example. Um, like doctors, I don't often listen to doc. I do listen to doctors, but I don't always take their advice. I mean, uh, look at the Bruce Lee yeah. story. He broke his back. He's never going to walk again. There's so many stories like this. And he said, sod that, I'm going to walk again. And he, that stubbornness, yeah. he didn't listen. He listened, but he didn't listen. Yeah, he listened, but he didn't listen. And I think that's a perfect example. Sometimes you've got to decide when you do that. I mean, take the story of Jeff Bezos. Everybody really? said to him, uh, the guy, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, just think about this. We wouldn't have, we as a, we as a nation, we as a planet wouldn't have the, the benefit, the convenience of Amazon had Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, listened to his boss. So get the story. He was working as a financial guy in New York. He had a really good job. He was paying well. And he had this idea way back then that he wanted to create something this whole online book selling warehouse. Now check this, the story went like something like this. He had a chat with his wife. His wife was like, I'm down. He then spoke to his boss. He told his boss, listen, can we go for a coffee? Him and his boss went out for a coffee and he, he articulated this, you know, he, he articulated this vision of creating this online bookstore thing where they sell books and other stuff, right? Back in those days when he was, when Amazon was an idea in his head. Now get this. He told him this whole thing and his boss said, you know what, that's a really good idea, Jeff, but that's a really good idea for somebody who isn't already got a successful six figure salary business. And I think this is way too risky for you to do. Great idea. Give it to somebody else. You've got a really safe job here. You're making good money. Don't go for it. And this is what Jeff Bezos had to say about it. He said he, he, he had spoken to his wife before. His wife was like, you know what? I trust you. I'm with you. If you want to take a gamble and if it works great, if it doesn't, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. He then said that the reason why he decided to ignore his boss was because he had what he called the regret minimization protocol. That's like geek language, right? He's a tech guy. He said he fast forwarded his life to the point where he was on his deathbed. And he said there would be a lot of things that he probably wouldn't regret. Like, you know, if he didn't make that much money and if he tried something and it didn't work, he wouldn't regret that. If he died broke, he probably wouldn't regret that. But he knew, he said, I knew that the one thing that I'd regret is not having tried out this Amazon thing and having a go at it and just ignoring it because I was safe over here because my boss and loads of my friends were saying, now nah, you're mad. Don't yeah. give up your six figure job to go and do this. And he ignored them. He I've did it. it. And I've here we it. are. I want to just slay in touch. And let's stay on the subject. Tesla, one of the most amazing men in the planet, he didn't go, he went against the grain with um, is it Edison. Yeah. And he yeah. suffered. We're greatly. talking about Nikola Tesla, by the way, folks, not the guy who yeah. created the Tesla car. One of the most Elon Musk. amazing revolutionary people in the history of the world. We don't really know that much about what we do now. Now, he went against the grain and he, he, believed in what he was doing. He wanted to do a really good job to erase humanity. And he, he suffered right. because of that. He, he, so totally. there's going to be times where you do the right thing and he, he died a poor man. Now, listen, I, I, I'm all about, it, what, what is life all about? I mean, we all, funnily, most people, it's not funny, we, we're, with creatures of comfort we we go for comfort we want to make things easier not many people have the the are prepared to sacrifice their lives and to have discomfort right. to for the greater good of man so mm. i mean i would like a bit of both i'd like some comfort and i'd like to do the greater good of man ideally but it doesn't always work out like that 
So what? How do you? How, what's, what's the? No, it doesn't. Uh, what What I'm trying to say is, ask in your p humble opinion. Doing the right thing, it might be the right thing, but you might <clears> always <throat> not benefit in this lifetime, which is sad. <clears throat> it worked out for Mr. Amazon, but as, as, I'm not trying to be a negative naysay. <clears throat> And I, I mean, you do die, I believe, with integrity and credibility. And there's nothing, can, listen, for someone who's had money and lost money, now um, I'm, I'm building myself up again and I feel fabulous for it. Yeah. And it's, it's I, when I had the money, I've had no integrity, no credibility. So I'm building myself back up. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm now doing what I believe is the right thing rather than a, a silly thing. And I feel great. Yeah, but there's still a bit of me like, oh, do you know what? I wouldn't mind a bit of money. <laughs> there's, there's nothing wrong. I with think that. I, I, I think there's a lot. So I I think you've hit a very valuable point, and that is about our values. And this really needs to this that kind of decision, ideally wants to be. I can't hear you. Wants oh, to go. Sorry, you back. You back. It wants to go back to our values. That conversation wants to go back to our values. Meaning that the better in touch we are with our values, that is what we cherish and what we hold as non-negotiables in our life, what we aspire for, the more easier and less resistant our decision-making becomes. And this is a really overlooked fact. We are running by other people's values. Guess what, folks? Half the things we're doing in this life, I don't know about you, but a lot of my career was to please my dad because I wanted to prove myself in front of my, in my dad's eyes that I was a successful guy, right? That, how many of you can relate to that? Come on. How many of us are in our careers or doing something in our lives because we're kind of indirectly trying to please our parents, even subtly, unknowingly, unwittingly, we're trying to do something to prove something to Absolutely. somebody. Absolutely. Now, and, and, and we're not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. You might be wanting to prove somebody that you're much better than your, what your teacher told you you'll ever be. That's fine. But to wholeheartedly and wholesale accept other people's values as your own, which you're doing. I became a soldier that. because my dad was a soldier and he, he was horrified that I became a soldier. He didn't even want me to become a soldier. He was a pacifist. But I, I mean, I shaped myself because I yeah, wanted to my dad. Yeah, so, and I remember you say, sharing that story. And I think, therefore, you hit that. Again, that's a really important point. That is to say, we want to become conscious of our own values and not inherit other people's values and run our whole life. So the bet, the more we become aware of our own values, those things that we hold valuable in our life, those things that we consider are non-negotiables, that we won't back down on these things because they're really how we stand by in life, the more likely we're going to make a decision that's true with ourselves. And then integrity is baked into the whole thing. That means if you go against the grain, so be it. And if you go and agree and do something that everybody's saying, you know what, you'd be amazing at that, Alex. Alex, you'd be a great presenter and you would be amazing at this because you're such a colorful personality. You're such a well-spoken guy. I think you'd be great as a presenter. Now, because one of your values is you want to be able to entertain and enlighten people, that's aligned to your values. So that kind of advice coming from people who care about you, I've you'll take. Reese Dry is saying here, realize, realize, realize. It's very tongue twisted here. He's basically saying the strongest person in the room is often the quietest and they're uh, trying to say like they have the inner self-belief the thing of that is if you if everybody is about to jump off a cliff and you're saying look guys you don't jump off the cliff i know a better way to get out of this yeah. situation you're gonna say something you're trying to save people but do you there is a time when yeah i understand being quiet if everyone's being an idiot in the room, so, I mean, sometimes yeah. you've got to try and save them? Or is that my own personal, or not? Let them no, I think that's what they're doing. No, I think, I think there's a lot to be said for integrity and speaking up, right? But whether they listen or not, whether, whether they listen or not is another thing. I think yeah. to stay quiet, right? There's an old, there's a saying by, um, I, think, I forget who it is, Peter Bernard. He said, all that's needed in this world for evil to triumph is for good people to stand around and do nothing. Yeah, my mom. And I really, and, and you've heard that. I know that's one of your favorite quotes as well, right? So the evil it's like you know, good man does nothing. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's a lot to be said about speaking up 
when you know that there's something that doesn't feel right. It doesn't mean that you're impressing your Vs on somebody else. You're simply pointing out something and giving people a different perspective to look at. Now, if they want to be sheep and stick to their thing, then that's cool. But some will listen. So I think there's always a place to say something with class, with a little bit of tact to the people around you and let them make their own mind up, just like we should make our own mind up. The problem is we're following too much a lot of the time and then we're seeking validation and waiting for them to rubber stamp what the hell we're doing, right? And then we're getting stuck because if we don't get the pat on the back from our loved ones, our friends, our family, our boss, whoever it is, then we're like stuck. We're like stuck. We can't move without them, but that shouldn't be the way. Surely we should be making our own decisions. So what we got going on in a few weeks, Prash? Where are we going? Yes, talking about making, t- talking about making decisions, everybody's going to say to you, why do you want to go away for three or four days in some kind of wilderness countryside setting to go and work on yourself? You don't need that. Let me put on my cockney accent. You don't need that, Gov. Listen, you're fine where you are. Stay where you are in Stratford, yeah? We'll take care of you. Just have a couple of beers, hang out with your mates. You don't need to go over to Hungary with some crazy white guy and some Indian guy and do some woo-woo stuff. You don't need to do that. Forget about that, Gov. Actually, actually, you do. Because it's going against the grain that has caused the greatest minds on the face of this earth to have the successes that they have. Simple. To have the results that others aren't getting, we sometimes have to do the things that others aren't doing. And I think that tells us a lot. And that's what we've got going on. So I was kind of going off on one, Alex. Sorry. (laughs) We're going to have a great retreat. It's going to be three... three nights, four days in the middle of a beautiful 300 acre valley. And there's going to be a luxury resort we'll be staying. So it's comfortable, beautiful accommodation. A mind, body, and spirit retreat. There's going to be moving. Right here, right here. Healthy. Alex, t-shirt. Meditation. Yeah, that's how we roll, baby. That's how we roll. We're going to be talking about what we've just been talking about. It's going to be very heavy or very light. It's both. You know, it's, we can go as heavy or as light as you want. We, both of us, me and Prash, we've been on this journey. Well, Prash has been doing transformational treats for nearly 10 years. I'm, I've just been starting in the last couple of years myself. This is the first time we've worked together. It's a really great place. It's set in a very spiritual, serene, excellent environment where we've got exquisite cuisine. Great fresh air. We're just 30 minutes from Lake Balaton, which are some of the best beaches and and in Hungary. And in Europe, in Europe. Hungary yeah. So uh, come it's, it's it just going to be an incredible time. The food will be great. The accommodation is great. The weather usually in September is gorgeous in Hungary, and it's a natural, natural environment where you're going to be away from pollution, away from digital media, and away from all the demands of society and technology. So you can detox and reach into yourself reach and in. learn a trick or two with Alex, with yeah, us, with myself, with the rest of the team. Listen, I've been, yeah, I've totally. been on my ass too, so many times in recent years, emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically, and it's, I've learned how to be extremely resilient and how to fall in love with myself again and to <laughs> yeah. love, love life and have passion. And it, it's an amazing world. There's, there's much more to this world than meets the eye. So that sounds a little bit heavy and hip, hippie and woo-woo, but hey, that's what I'm about, baby, and that's what we're about on this retreat. We're going to give you some great ideas and techniques on how to live life a bit more fun. Yeah, and Alex, more- on that note, as a finisher, a lot more fun. Can I just say that one of these upcoming lives, let's talk about that last point that you said, because I don't think you need to apologize for the whole woo thing at all. I don't think anybody should have to apologize. Let me just say one thing real simple. No bones about it. Most human beings in their waking state are run, 90% of their behavior is run by their subconscious mind. The stuff they can't even damn well see or even know. 90% of our behavior choices, decisions are run by that subconscious mind. So if you think that not embracing all this so-called woo-woo and mind stuff is an option, you're wrong. This is the kind of stuff that will make the difference between you and so many people out there. It's the one that will separate you from being with all the sheep. It's the red pill. It's the pill that's going to help you to be an 
actualize the best side of yourself. So there's so much to say. And I think we should do a live on that, Alex, at some stage, for sure. But for the meantime, we'll put the link here anyway, Alex. We'll get the link. Um, by the way, Alex, um, I was just going to say great news. For those of us who, for those of you guys who are watching this, if you still action now, we will honor, and Alex, I hope you don't mind, but I was proposing we actually honor the early bird price a little longer for those people who really want to come because we yeah. want the right kind of people to come. Robbie, my man, um, Danny, there's some of you guys who are already on us. It's going to be a pleasure. Justine, if you can join us, it'll be great. Big shout out to my man, Gene, who joining us from LA. Big shout, my man. So there's some really good people here. If you guys want to join us, we will honor that <coughs> early bird price and keep it extended. Alex, got any objections? Let's make it happen, man. All right, twist my arm. Garnered. You've done it. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Let's get the people on the call. Let's do this. Guys, if you're interested, please give us a message. Speak to you soon, guys. Adios, amigos. Alex, take care. We'll catch up. We'll do another one.